This is the five oldest bars in New York City. Brought to you by Get Lost, Inspire Travel. Let's begin. 10 a.m. in June, we hit up PJ Clark's. Opened 1884. 915 Third Avenue. Armed with a camera, a few good friends, and a willingness to day drink, we dove into one of my favorite places to put one back. While this old girl has been around a while, she still feels like a local bar, a place you can come and not be bothered. The bartenders know when to talk, when not to, and how to make a rusty nail. There's all the hallmarks of a great city bar. An old juke with lots of Sinatra, white tiled floor, white tin ceiling, fresh cheap oysters to slurp down, lots of good beer and food, and a bathroom that's seen more action than Rocco Sofredi. There's also a stuffed dead dog named Sparky, a couple of human femurs stuck in the wall, and of course, a dead baseball player who drank here. Whose ashes are they? <laughs> Who's that guy? Phil Kennedy, infield for the Cardinals. Ugh. Yeah, I guess he was here so long, yeah. just keep him. Is that up to health code? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we headed downtown to the seaport and saddled up at the Bridge Cafe for another round. It opened in 1794. Fuck, that's old. On camera. Sorry. Take two? Take two. Yeah. Yes. We are the oldest contiguously serving bar in New York City. Straight through Prohibition they serve. How do they serve through Prohibition? Um, the building was owned by an alderman. Oh, it's also haunted. There was a brothel upstairs. What they would do is douse themselves in between customers with lavender. It's myself and one other staff member, one table here, kitchen's already gone home. Somebody walked by with a scarf doused in lavender. And we all kind of looked at each other, and my exact words were just far out. And that was it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Moving on to a broad named Pearl, we visited the historic Francis Tavern. Francis Tavern. Francis? Francis? Fran Francis Tavern? Ah, fuck it. Further paddling down the Beer River, we enjoyed the lively scene, repute with old-timey Irish music, which provided the perfect backdrop to feel this old girl's history. But it made me have to ask. Is this the oldest bar in New York City? It depends. It's, it's 250 years ago since Samuel Francis signed the lease in this place. Okay. There's a so, debate. Yes, there's a debate, yeah. That's the oldest standing structure in New York. All that brick was imported from, uh, from Holland. George Washington said goodbye to his troops. Um, the Sons of Liberty used to meet here to plot against the Brits when New York was the original capital. They had a Department of War, the Treasury were based in this building. Now this dude from Long Island is based in this building. Get her digits, bruh. We said goodbye to the warm oak and soft light of Francis Tavern and made our way to our penultimate stop, Pete's Tavern, 1864 on 18th and Irving. It had been a good six minutes since our last beer, so we put another one away before getting the info on Pete's. Pete's has been here since 1864 when it was originally a hotel. It was called the Portman Hotel. We have the upstairs room. That was originally a holding area for Ringling, Barnum, and Bailey Circus. Really? Yeah. <laughs> We, we have had pretty much everybody in here over the last uh, 130, 140 years. Yeah. Oh, Henry lived across the street on 17th and Irving. So this was one of his uh, one of his drinking boats. He supposedly wrote the gift of the Magi here in one of the front booths. What was his drink? Was he a bourbon man? Uh, you know, I, I, could, I could make something up, but I'd be telling you a story. I honestly <laughs> don't ask know. Him. You know, when I sit here sometimes at night, like I'll be the last person out here at 4 a.m. this morning. I mean, it's just amazing, even for me being here 25 years to actually just take a look around. You know, New York is a quick, fast-paced city, so just to be here and look around at the walls, at the bar, and think that how many generations of bartenders and waitresses and busboys put their kids through school or paid their rent because of these four walls. Four walls yeah. For me, it's just uh, cool to yeah. because it's, it's the real deal. Oh, thank you. Last up was my local, McSorley's. Well, you never feel sorely at McSorley's. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Where do you start? The beginning. Uh, in the beginning, there was a, a neighborhood that needed a bar. John McSorley came over just after the famine in Ireland. Back in the day, there were tons of bars like this. The big thing about McSorley is to pick and tin and wars, and depressions and everything else, prohibition. It survived it all, and that's what made it famous, that it actually survived. Why? How? Lots of different things. Mostly chance, but yeah. that's always how a lot of things happen, it's chance. But John McSorley was just a regular bar owner, but it was actually when he died, his son went around and nailed everything to the wall. He said, I don't want anything to change. I want to keep this place as a memorial to my father. We have the chair that Lincoln sat in when he was here. We've got a watch and poster for John Wilkes Booth. Right. We've got an invitation to the opening of the Brooklyn Bridge over there. 
It was the last bar in the city to serve women, but that was something that couldn't last. <laughs> Why do you come here? For the history. For the history? Yeah. What's your favorite thing about the bar? That sign right there. We went to a bar and they had like ashes behind. Yeah. The, uh, is there anything like that behind here? Over here. What is this? All these are old customers. This is a guy, Bobby Bowles. We used to live upstairs. This is a guy named Jack Savage, an old, old customer of ours. And this is another old record of ours in wax. We drank here for 40 years. But those are their ashes? Their ashes, yeah. My favorite part is watching this young blood find out that there's three dead people behind the bar. That's the magic of New York. It is always something new to learn about, and it's probably about where the bodies are buried. We finished out McSorley's, toasted to those that weren't with us, and thanked the gods of film for not letting me forget the camera and some booth. This has been the five oldest bars in New York. Thanks for watching. He's the best urinals in the world. You feel like Superman in here. It's like the fortress of solitude. And then when you're done, like old school. Transcom and choo-choo! <laughs>